Hi, I'm Ashy. Welcome to my January alphabet painting series. So this year I decided to choose a New Year's resolution that I feel like is actually doable. And that is to, for the first six, the first 26 days of the year, to paint a small, quick watercolor sketch that corresponds with the letters of the alphabet. This will help me be disciplined and help me paint daily for this first you know, month or so. And hopefully this will help me also build that habit of creativity and just pulling out the paints every single day. And it's just building that habit of creativity. Uh, let me know if you have any New Year's resolutions that you are deciding on for yourself this year. I'd love to hear your different ideas in the comments. So for each of these videos, I'll be using the brand new sketchbook that I'm starting this year. Um, it's Moleskin watercolor album. It's not the highest quality paper, but for quick watercolor sketches, it does the job. Let's jump in. Day 23 is W is for water tower. And this is really done for my oldest daughter. She is in love with water towers. She loves to point them out whenever we're driving. We did a road trip about a year ago and literally the whole time she was awake, anytime she saw one, she would point it out. And sometimes they were super far in the distance. Other times they were close, but I literally never knew there were so many water towers until my daughter started pointing them all out to me. So I know like I've seen some cool water towers before. One of them was like in Georgia, there's a peach water tower. And so I just did a Pinterest search for like cool water towers and I found some that were shaped like teacups and teapots. So I thought that was a really fun idea. So I'm just gonna use a reference photo from Pinterest and draw a teapot water tower. I just started with this curved line, which is gonna be the lid of the teapot. And then it comes up and just throw a triangle basically on top of the curved line. So this video is gonna be a little bit longer it is a bit more complex of a shape, but we can still break down that complex shape into different shapes. So we have like an oval, right, that we didn't complete. Then we have a triangle. And then on top of the triangle, we have the little handle part of the lid, which is a little column. So a rectangle with a curved top to show that it's round. Okay. So something like that. Now we're gonna come down from the sides of the oval and make our pot. So again, it's a cylinder or so just gonna create like a rectangle, but it's gonna have a curved bottom. And since we're looking up at it, that curve is going to be pointed up. Okay. Now this kind of continues out because there's a walkway around that um, water tower. So there's going to be some fencing, which is just basically another curved line. Right? And then some vertical lines. relatively even spacing around doesn't really matter that much when you get toward the edges they should be a little bit closer together because they're curving away from us and then eventually they if we could see all the way around they would start to overlap but we can't see all the way around okay <clears throat> and then here we have the handle of our teapot going to kind of come out and go up and then curve around into the body of the teapot. Okay. Do that. 
same thing. Follow the same curves for the other line of the handle. Okay, now over here we have the spout or where it kind of where we can pour it. So again, we kind of have a triangle here and then it just comes out. And then meets back up down here. So just draw that triangle. A little bit of a curve on that one side of the triangle, but even if you didn't have that, it wouldn't matter that much. Okay. <clears throat> I think I want to make it a little bit longer though. So I'm going to just bring that angle down a little bit more to here and then curve that up. Yeah, I like that better. Okay. So here's the basics of our um, water tower and then I'm just going to complete this oval for the bottom. Okay. Now underneath the water tower there's a bunch of stuff going on that I'm just not going to draw because that's not the main focus of this for me. I do need to put some legs on the water tower because it's got to stand up. So I'm just going to put the legs sticking out to the side and then the other ones in the back here and if that's not the right angle that teapot would fall over okay let's make it follow more this other one's angle. There we go. All right, and this is just going to be basically like darkness. So I don't have to paint a bunch of details because it's all in the shadow. You can't really see it anyway. And if I paint a bunch of details here, then you're going to miss the details of the rest of the thing that I want you to actually focus on. So we're going to just make that pretty simple. And then these, since they are going to be dark, I can draw pretty dark lines and not really worry about it being seen through the, the very concentrated and dark pigment. So just kind of darkening these up so that when I go over with my kneaded eraser, I don't lift up too much of that. And then in the photo, this railing is actually white, but I'm just going to paint it like a metal color, a dark gray color, just to make it easier. Okay, and then we'll put some details on the water tower with just paint, um, some like floral and line and squiggle details. So I'm just going to take my kneaded eraser and turn it into a log and just roll it over and you can see the spots where I drew lighter it comes up quite a bit more than the spots where I drew really dark down here and that's fine. Okay now I went a little aggressive on my line here so I'm just going to actually rub instead of roll or dab sometimes I dab also because that's actually going to be 
white and just a shadowy color so I need it to be pretty light where this spell was and I had painted it very dark or drawn it very dark okay now we can get into painting it So I'm going to start with a size 2 round brush. It's pretty small, but I don't need it to be that big because I'm just painting some shadows. So I'm going to wake up this kind of blue and Payne's Gray mixture that I already have here. And I don't really clean my palettes very often. Um, so I keep a lot of that paint and just reuse it. So I'm going to start by going under the rim of the lid here. And that one's a pretty sharp shadow, so I'm going to kind of leave it like that and let it dry. And then here, there's a pretty distinct shadow as well. But I am going to blend that one out a little bit more. And then I'm just going to do that same thing on the edges. So this side is in shadow. So just get a kind of crisp edge and then rinse, dry my brush, and then just blend it out so that the middle edge is softer and doesn't have really a hard line there. So just going to kind of keep blending that out all the way across just to give it this little hint of color. And then I'm going to take some of that color and just kind of touch this edge so that you can see where the edge is because if you don't have anything there, it's just going to fade off into the background. And just take a tiny bit more. And touch it. Okay. Now I am going to kind of scrub this edge just a little bit because I want it to be a little bit soft. But I didn't want it to be so soft where I had like a wet on wet bleed. I don't know if that makes sense, but... I'm just going to kind of scrub it out just a little bit. And I think I had mixed some ultramarine in with the Payne's Gray because it's kind of separating a little bit, which is fine. It's just an interesting thing to note when you use certain colors, how they react. Okay, so I'm going to mix up some blue now. So I'm going to use Prussian blue in Payne's Gray and get this like real dark blue color. Okay. And I'm going to use that for the handle.
now I'm going to rinse off my brush completely. And then the goal is I'm just going to touch this and drag some of that color around to look like a reflection. And it may or may not work, but we'll see. So just now I'm just softening the edge just a little bit. Okay. I don't know. We'll see how it looks after we're done. Now I'm going to take some of that Payne's Gray again. Maybe I should have done this first and use this, do this edge. Now I'm going to rinse. Yeah, I definitely should have done this first because that's going to completely undo that reflection, but that's okay. So I'm just going to rinse my brush and blend out that shadow, bringing it around just a little bit. And then I'm just introducing water to a lot of this shape. That way it can just kind of blend out as far as it wants to and not have a hard edge at the end. Okay, now I'm going to create the shadow for the spout here. So this is going to be a soft transition, so just kind of introduce some extra water there, let it bleed out. force it to bleed out if it doesn't want to. <laughs> and then the inside of this line will be a softer transition as well. So I just introduced a little bit of water to that inside. And then I'm going to blend it out a little bit. Okay. Let me get this edge defined a little bit. And that won't bleed out very far, but it should be a soft edge as well. Okay. Now, on the top, I'm going to do the same as the handle color on this lip and so that's just like a painted detail on the um this thing teapot so it's got a painted rim there okay Now, I'm just going to take some more concentrated Payne's Gray and just the smallest amount of Prussian Blue just to give it that similar um, feel to it as the handle, but it's going to be a much more concentrated, darker, more Payne's Gray version. And then I'm just going to paint in the underside here.
So I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll probably have to do another layer. And I'm gonna use my liner brush now to create some of these other details here. So the support, um, the support beams that come or support poles or whatever that come down. Okay. And then same for the back ones. Just gonna do another layer on the ones in front so that uh, that difference in intensity or value can show depth. So by making the ones in front darker, that can show that they're in front. And then the lighter ones are in the back. I'm also making these ones in front bigger because I made a mistake and got a wobbly hand. So just making it bigger, that's fine. No big deal. And then the legs coming down. And I'm just making them solid color. Not really worried about, again, creating detail with these because I don't want to have a lot of focus. It's already going to be so intense with the with the darkness that I don't need to create any more focus on it by adding detail. And then just a little bit in the back. And again, going for a slightly lighter value for the back ones. So I'm just going to come back and do one more layer. Now that should dry fairly even. And then I'm gonna take the liner brush again and create the railings. 
So this is just a matter of moving my hand fairly quickly across the page. Don't let it stop because when you stop, that's when you end up with more wobbly lines. If you just do a nice, smooth, quick motion all the way across, your line's going to be straighter and moving your whole arm, not just your hand or your wrist. Okay. There we go. Now I'm going to introduce just a little bit of the handle color to the top of this little knob. Now I'm going to take that liner brush and I'm going to start using some various colors to create some details. So I'm just going to kind of get some of this warm yellow and make some hand painted looking just wiggly lines. Just basically painting some squiggles. Okay. And then take some orange kind of do a little wiggly maybe it's like a little flower and then take some of that blue and do a little wiggly line coming up. Okay. And now to paint some just very simple florally details. They're not going to be any specific flowers or anything. It's just going to be some floral details. So I'm going to stick with the liner brush for a few minutes here and I'm going to create like a little vine and then I'm going to write the city's name inside this um, shape. So I'm going to create like a border here. And then I'll add ah, some flowers and things to it. Okay. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, this is going to mimic like a hand painted item. And Maybe whoever hand painted this one wasn't so good at painting florals, because that's me. Not the best with florals. So just adding in with this same green, some little dots, leafy shapes. Coming off of it. We're going to call that good. And then I'm just going to take my size zero brush and add in some of these warm colors for 
oops, that's green. Some of these warm colors for some flower ish details in. Again, it's so tiny, you can't really tell what this is anyway, so we're just gonna make some shapes. So kind of thinking about like little petal shapes or little buds. And then I'm going to take some of the orange and do the same thing. And then I'm just going to take the liner brush and warm up the green with some burnt umber. And then create little branches to connect. And just create a little bit of contrast with the rest of the the vine. I can touch some of the leaves too with that color. Okay, we're gonna call that good. And then I'm just gonna write the city name in. And this the picture that I found definitely is in a different country. It's not in America where I live. So I'm just going to write reading, which is not anywhere where I live. But um, this kind of reminds me of like a Dutch teapot. I don't know if that's real or that's, I'm just making that up. But that's what it reminds me of. So I'm going to write reading because it's a Dutch city here in the United States. E-A-D-I-N. So I did my first and my last letters so that I can kind of see how big I can do the rest of them. Okay. Reading or reading, I don't know. And there is my little teapot water tower and that took forever but it was a lot of fun, um, just something different. So now I'm gonna use that same orange that's kind of um, muted with some blue to do W. is four and then I'm going to do this on two lines for water tower. This is a kind of a at least it appears to be a grayish blue color so that's what I'm going to use. And just working on using the brush pins and doing kind of pressure strokes to make calligraphy writing. So light up heavy down
Day 23, W is for water tower. Thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to see when each of my new videos drops. Have an awesome day.